Say, I'm ready to receive the word of God to change my life more than ever before. I open my heart to receive revelation by the word of God, empowered by His Spirit through you, Hun. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's get ready for this, okay? This is going to be pretty awesome. I asked the Lord this. I don't know. I don't actually know how to put it all together, but thank God for God. <laughs> He's pretty cool. <laughs> Amen. But I want you to understand that as much as if it is about God, it's so much about you. I want you to understand this. I want you to understand that Christianity in general is just another religion. And I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. Christianity is actually another religion. And people can say what they want. And I say, God, please help us. And God is. Thank God. But there is still so much religious junk in our belief system. Like I said to people, you know, you, uh, Johan, so are you very religious? I said, no, but there's so much more, more some religious stuff in me that needs to go. You see, because none of us has arrived, but thank God, you know what? Every day is a manifested reality, you know, of who we are more and more. Because I want us to understand that God knew you before the foundation of the world. His whole plan was you. Did you know that? His whole plan wasn't Jesus. That was part of his plan. <laughs> you understand? But his plan was you. His whole idea was you from the start. And the Bible says in Genesis, I want us to get to that in Genesis he talks that in Genesis 1, it says, and he says this, let's form man in our image and likeness. Image, likeness. And it was a prophetic utterance because that was Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 only started off, and I'm not going to get into that teachings, get the teachings. Um, Genesis 2, it started off and then it goes on and he made Adam. But he said, let's make them in Genesis 1. So that an image and likeness was not Adam. It was a prophetic proclamation about you and about me. And then he formed Adam. You see, it's God's whole idea in Genesis 1 was likeness and image like him. Adam was not the true son of God. You've heard me say it many a times. It was saying that he was made by, he was made in the soul. He was made by a soul. He was not made by the spirit. He was a soul man, you know, a groovy soul man. <laughs> so he could sin, he could falter. But there was an image and a likeness that God says, I want to create somebody, some people just like me. Just like me. God didn't have this, you know what, idea that, you know what, this great humanity Oh, they're going to mess up. Oh, I'll send Jesus and oh, let's just help them a little bit, you know, and shame, you know. You know that whole idea and, then, and God was so angry with us and I oh, send Jesus and let's just, just this martyr Jesus and let's just get this whole thing over with and then just get them saved. Yeah, you know this whole idea of this stuff that we have in Christianity? That God is a very angry God continuously. God is this God always ready for vengeance. God is always ready, you know what, this God of, you know what, I'm waiting for you to do something wrong and I'm going to hurt you. You see, that was not God's plan from the start. His whole being, His whole character is just love. It's not a part of Him, it's who He is. I want you to understand this morning, you were not just some far-fetched idea and then you came to be. That is not you. You are the true image of God in likeness, image and likeness. 
Image, you look like Him. Likeness, you act like Him. You be like Him. Do you hear what I'm saying? I want us to move beyond what you can taste and feel. I want you to see this morning, you know what, you're just more than just this thing. Because if you're going to see it start more and more that you truly like Him, you're going to start manifesting Him. Do you hear? That's the whole idea. We as a people, we need to preach, um, especially my job, is to tell you who you are. Then I will say to you, you are like God. People get upset. But he said, likeness and image. And people get upset, uh, very upset, but how can you say you like God? Easy, he said it. John 10, 34. Genesis, huh? Psalm 8. I mean, come on. I can go on and on and on and on. Ambassadors of Christ. I could go on and on. The first seed of my many. On and on and on. Can I keep on going? <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? But we have this whole thing with God. He says something. No, he was just saying something. He didn't really mean it. When God says, let's make man in our image and likeness, what is he saying? Image and likeness. Say, I am made in the image and likeness of God Almighty. Amen. Because if you start, we're going to look some stuff and I'm going to... Uh, you know what? The funniest thing is here today, I'm just basically going to read scripture. The scripture is going to preach to you this morning. Is that okay? Because we like the word. Isn't it right? I love the word. There's so much scriptures and I have to stop. <laughs> Gotta get this one and this one and this one. Ooh, I like that one. Yes, this is a good one. And the Greek, ooh, I like the Greek one with this. And the Hebrew, whew, and I like the New Living Trust. Like, oh, it's just too much. I was busy going on, going on, going on. Yesterday, I said to my wife, I'm coming home. God, it's too much for me. It's too much for me. I said, Mom, I'm coming home. I said, why? No, no, God, it's just too much for me now. Because I started reading the scripture. I said, no, this is too much. No, this is too much. I said, no, Lord, this is too much. Then I, it, it really, it freak, God freaks me out. Because His goodness is overwhelming. It's so overwhelming. Because His goodness is so overwhelming. Why do you want to go and sin then? You don't want to. Amen. Because he overwhelms me so much that I don't even think about the things of the flesh. Because it's like, wow, yes, no, wait, wait, what? I said, Moab, no, no, no. I to just, I said, God, no way. You're messing up my whole scene here. You're messing me up, you know. But I want to read more. <laughs> wait, 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 I must meditate. Wait, wait, I must meditate. A tune you mate. <laughs> Amen. But I want to first get into some basic stuff quickly. I want you to see how awesome God is. You see, in John fourteen twenty, this is John fourteen twenty, New King James. He says, "This is already proclaiming that He wants to be one with us." At the day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. See, there's a whole oneness that God wants. You see, we can't be separate from God and try to be God. That's what people think when we say you are like God. If you try to do that, you will die. Very quickly. In Acts, um, Herod came, and he proclaimed himself as God. The people were shouting, God, God, God. And in this New Testament, Acts, Sunny angels st stood behind him and struck him, no? and the worms ate him alive. Book of Acts, New Testament. You see, we can't be God without God. <laughs> You're going to have a problem. You see. But God wants us to be one with us. He wants to be in, in to vogue and woven with us. You got the SMS, you know? It says, you know what? God doesn't want to be first in your life. or wants to be number one in your life. He wants to be one with you in your life. He wants to be woven into your life. Every part, every aspect of your life. 
He wants to be woven. You know what? God is intrigued by you. He is amazed by you. Do you know that? Because you think about how can God be amazed and be intrigued by you. You can read Psalm 139. His thoughts towards you is innumerable like the sand in the seashore. He's totally intrigued by you, but we can't see that. Because we have so much religious junk in us. Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, God. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't get me wrong. God is God. I don't... I know, I said, I still have a fear of the Lord. Don't get me wrong. God is God. But we have this religious thing about God. That we need to get out of the way. We always think, you know what? That God, how can God really love me? How can God really care for me? How can God really love me? I mean, I'm not even the most educated person. How can God really use me? See, we have this whole wrong mindset concerning God and concerning ourselves. I'm just but a mere mortal. And when my time is up, my time is up. See, we've been taught this nonsense. But God's whole idea was you. He is besotted about you. God wants to be found by you. He says in Isaiah, sorry, I want to use the Amplified quickly here. In uh, John 17. As well, because I want to jump the gun now. I want to read some stuff. John 17 from 20 to 23, the Amplified. Neither for these alone do I pray. It is not for their sake only that I make this, this request, but also for all those who will ever come to believe and trust and cling and rely on me. It means everybody after this. Me, through their word and teaching, that they may all be one, just as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they all may be one in us, so that their world may believe and be convinced that you have sent me. In other words, that you are, that, you are like God. So it says, so that people in the world can see that this and Jesus truly exists. Then when people look and see glad as they see Jesus, well, he really exists. Or high energy, they really exist. Because He's one, you're all one with God that they can see. Come on. Jesus is real because I can see Him. See, God wants to reveal Himself to the world through you. Do you understand what I'm saying? Not just miracles, but you. You, 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 you. He said that. I've given them to the glory. It says, um, you know, so that the world may believe and be convinced that you have sent me. I have given uh, to them the glory and honor which you have given me, that they may be one even as we are one. I and them and you and me in order that they may become one and perfectly united. That the world may know and, and definitely recognize that you sent me and that you have loved them even as you have loved me. Come on, how clear is that? How clear is that? And he says, the glory that I have, I give you. No, no, only God gets the glory. God says, no, I'll give you the glory. Glory means radiance, means lightened, enlightened. It means, wow. God says, I give you glory. Glory, 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 glory. Say, I am filled with God's glory. Manifested. On this earth, right now. This is what God sees. This is about you. This is who you are. When you start recognizing this and seeing this and whatever, why do you want to go and sin? You don't want to. Do you understand? This is God. This is, this is beautiful. But the best is the years to come. <laughs> Now, when I want to read Isaiah 65. This is how God is. You see, God is not far off. He's not some up there in the heavens and whatever. And you must work so much to actually find Him. Or when He decides that you must come, you must come. You know, you'll decide when you must come. Sorry. No, He says here. The Lord says, I was ready to respond, but no one asked for help. 
Isaiah 65, New Living Translation. He says here, the Lord says, I was ready to respond, but no one asked for help. He wants to help. I was ready to be found, but no one was looking for me. I said, here I am, here I am. To a nation that did not call on my name. All day long I opened my arms to rebellious people. But they followed their own evil paths and their own crooked schemes. Do you understand what I'm saying? Jesus didn't die like this. He died like this. The Bible says in Revelation, it says that the, 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 the gates of heaven is always open. It's never shut. You see, God wants to help. He says, come on, here I am, here I am. Pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me, pick me. No, no, call a friend, member of the audience, 50-50. No, no, pick me, pick me. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? God wants to be found. He wants to help. He wants to restore. He wants to be ble- bless you. He wants to. But no. I enjoy these things. God said, but it's killing you. This stuff is killing you. I still love you, but it's killing you. God said, come let me help you. No. See, God wants to love. He wants to care. He's not a God that kills and destroys. You see, John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that, you know, what, that no one should perish but have everlasting life. Okay? It talks about then that they should not be condemned, but have everlasting life. Okay? You must understand, your sin condemns you, not God. Do you know that? When you mess up, that stuff... <sighs> so God doesn't condemn but what you must understand, the things that you do condemns you, and that hurts you, and it hurts God. Do you understand? When your kid is going through some stuff, and he's doing wrong stuff, and your kid says, no, 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 it's hurting you, isn't it right? Just as much as hurt your kid, isn't it, am I right? This is God, people. God is love. It's not a part of it. He is it. Okay, you love chastens, love rebukes, don't get, we'll get to that. But you need to understand that. See, if you do something that hurts you, it actually hurts God. Because you can see the end of it, it's not good. Do you hear what I'm saying? But God loves you. God cares for you. Because you are just like Him. You are just like Him. I like the message. It says here, the message of Isaiah 65, verse 1 and 2. The message. The people who bother to reach out to God. Says, I've made myself available to those who haven't bothered to ask. He made them available. I'm here ready to be found by those who haven't bothered to look. I kept saying, here I am. Yeah, I am right here. Not to a, nation that, uh, to a nation that ignored me. I reach out day after day to a people who turn their backs on me. People who make wrong turns, who in, insist on doing things their own way. See, this is what people do. Like, Don't let your life get in the way. Let God get in the way of your life. Amen? No, I can't do this because I'm too busy. I try to explain to people it's not a religious idea, but don't miss a day of church. Why? Because you get something that will change your life radically. It's not what I can give to you, but Christ in me. The hope of glory is a different story. Am I right? Amen. Do you hear what I'm saying? Because I want people not to miss anything. Because the word is washing, the spirit is here. There's anointing upon the word that will touch you, change you. It's to break off that religious junk and that mindset of yours to actually to f- fulfill the whole promises that God has for you in your life. And people struggle from day to day because they have not renewed their minds. They're not continuously under the word or anointed word. 
Now I'm going to get in some good parts. Is that okay? Fun stuff. Ephesians 1, verse 3 to 6. I think it's in New King James. I think. I think of, not the, not the King James version of, 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 it's too difficult of, for me to do it. Of. But Ephesians 1, from verse 3 to 6, it says here, Blessed be the God of Father, Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. How many times do we say that, but do we live it? <laughs> in your face. <laughs> Just as He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. You see, He knew you. He chose you before we, this world even existed, before even Jesus came. He said, yep, I like you. I have plans for you. You're going to be just like me. But can we think that? Do we understand that? That he said, come on, you're going to be just like me. But I'm black. Is Jesus black? Many can be. <laughs> you know, I'm a Burki. I'm Greek. Whatever. Doesn't matter. You can be like him. And you are like him. That we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Having predestined us to adoption as sons by Christ, Jesus Christ to himself. According to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us uh, accepted in the beloved. He says he predestined us. In other words, he had plans for you, predestined everything for you. But yet you can say, I resist it. But it doesn't matter how you resist it, God still sees you like it. You could be a naughty boy, a naughty girl, it doesn't matter, God still sees you like it. You know? You might not have that perfect plan that God has for you, but he still sees you as you are. How many Christians, you know, that saved? Shorten their lives. They don't fulfill their purpose and their destiny. Because he says, I'm ready to be found. I'm ready to be found. Here I am. Here I am. No, I'll always stick to my belief systems. But there's so much more in God, in God in us, that we're not willing to lay hold of it. You see, we still are so carnally minded concerning the Word of God. I said, I got, like yesterday, I got a bit of bit scared. And it happened to me once, be, uh, yeah, once before, or twice before. That, I, that they were, I understood what God was saying, that there's so much immense power in me that I'm scared to say the wrong thing because it will happen. Do you hear what I'm saying? That I, I'm starting to understand and grasp the severity and the power of God that God has bestowed upon me and within me, it actually sometimes frightens and scares me. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you, that we have to get to that place? You know, and we understand that we are like God, so, and we're renewing our minds, so we will speak right, act right, do right. Do you hear what I'm saying? Now we're going to get into some more good stuff. In the message Bible, 1 Corinthians 13. You know the love thing. But 1 Corinthians 13, from verse 12 to 13. The message Bible, 1 Corinthians 13, from verse 12 to 13. It says here, We do not yet see things clearly. We squinting in fog, peering through a mist. But it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then. See it all as clearly as God sees us. Knowing Him directly just as He know us, knows us. It's hectic. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do uh, to do lead us towards this consummation. Trust steadily in God. I mean, believe, trust, not believe, that word believe, just trust. That he's good at his word. In God. Hope unwavering. Hope that all's going to be good. 
Hope means it's a future thing. It might not happen now, but it's going to be okay. And God says He's going to manifest. You're going to be like Him. You, you are like Him, but it, wait, it's going to manifest. Love extravagantly. Love extravagantly. And the best of the three is love. How can you love extravagantly without God? Who is love? I'll ask you. You can't. It's impossible to love the unlovable. (laughs) If you not have God understanding you are like God. Because God loves everybody. How can you love God if you're not filled with the Spirit of God? If you are baptized, how, if you're not doing those things, God gave you these keys to empower you to actually love and act and be like Him. Otherwise, you cannot love extravagantly. It's impossible for you. But we want to love the way our belief system and our religious Christianity has told us. You must love your husband and you must love your wife. And you must love God. Okay, I must love him then, eh? Huh? Love is a choice. Ah, so I choose to love. What happens the day when God says, I don't choose to love anymore? What the day comes and your husband decides not to love you anymore? Or your wife doesn't love you anymore? Problem, eh? You see, I say to people, love is not a choice. Love is just to be. As God is love, I just love. With no conditions, I just love. I'm, I just love. If you, the same thing with God. God loves us. Even if we reject that or not, He still loves us. Even if you, 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 you're going back to your old nature and busy killing yourself, God still loves you. Although you still reject that love, it doesn't matter. He still loves you. That's hard, eh? That's hard, but God still loves. And it hurts him because he loves us so much. He said, you are just like me. Why are you going on like before? I just love you. You see, we need to renew our minds concerning this thing of beautiful grace. And then I'm going to go into some more nice stuff. 2 Corinthians 3. We're going to do the whole Corinthians, the message. I'm just reading here. I thought, Lord, I'm not a big fan of the message, but I thought, Lord, God, show me this stuff. I said, this will help the people better. This will help you better understand stuff. Okay. Does it sound like we're patting ourselves on the the back? This is Paul speaking. Insisting on our credentials, asserting our authority. How many pastors and Whatever people do that. Many. Well, we're not. Neither do we need letters of endorsement, either to you or from you. You yourself are all the endorsement we need. Your very lives are a letter that anyone can read by just looking at you. So Paul's busy saying, come on. The first Corinthians, he didn't like very much. The second, he's commending them that they've changed. Because the first Corinthians, you know, the first Corinthians uh, um, book, he was saying, listen, come on, you know the gifts, you know all this stuff, but why are you still going on like the wolf? That's what he was saying. He said, don't you know who you are? Don't you understand who died for you? Don't you understand you are like God's? Do you, don't you understand these things? And they start grasping the stuff. In second Corinthians, he's busy admonishing them. and said, listen, you're doing sweet. He says, verse 3, Christ himself wrote it, not with ink, but with God's living spirit, not chiseled into stone, but carved into human lives. You are God's epistle. You are God's life. You are living God here. You are that. You are that Jesus that the world needs to see. Yet seeing is believing. You are that one. You are that one. It says, but carved into human lives, and we publish it. We could not be more sure of ourselves in this, that you, written by Christ himself, for God, uh, are our letter of recommendation. We won't think of writing this kind of letter about ourselves. Only God can write such a letter. His letter authorized us to help carry out 
this plan of action, the plan wasn't written out with ink or on paper, with pages of pages of legal footnotes killing your spirit. It is written spirit on spirit. He's talking about the law and the stuff and legalism. How much stuff do's and don'ts, legalities are still in the church? Many. How many legalistic stuff do you still do in yourself? Many. Do you understand? That's what he's busy saying. The spirit, the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. The New King James says. His life in our lives. Lifting the veil. The government of death. Talks about the law. His, his constitution, chiseled on stone tablets, had a dazzling inaugural. Moses' face as he delivered the tablets was so bright that they even through it would fade soon enough. That the people of Israel could not more look right at him than stare into the sun. How much more the dazzling than the government of a living spirit. In the government of condemnation was impressive. How about the government of affirma affirmation? God is affirming you. The government of aff affirmation. What is he saying? I affirm you. It's like affirmation. You want to hear? He's saying, I love you. He says, you're just like me. That is the new, new law that came into place. The freedom, the New Testament. If they think people, the law is so great and awesome and whatever, what about this new one? That God is affirming you and me. Come on. This is not you. You don't do that stuff anymore. I'll show you who you are. You are like this. You are like me. Do you hear what I'm saying? This is how God sees us. This is how you need to understand that. This is how you are made for. And He speaks this over you continuously. So you can start manifesting. The more you hear that somebody loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you, I think after a while you're probably going to stop believing it. Am I right? So God is busy affirming over and over, you are like me, you are like me, I'll give you my grace, give you, you are like me, you don't do it. And you, after a while, what's going to happen? You should stop believing it. If I keep on preaching to you who you are, 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 the day you get tired of it, that's the day you're going to start understanding it. Oh, light bulb. I got it. Praise God, I got it. Thank God you did get it. Took you seven years, but you got it. <laughs> Do you hear what I'm saying? But I want to keep it to you more. I want to teach you more, or tell you more who you are. Not who you are not. I said to you, this is not who you are. Now, who are you? Righteous, holy, blameless. This is who you are. Where am I now? Okay. Um, verse 10. Bright as the old government was, it was, it would look downward dull alongside this new one. Dull. People will still want to do the law and the Ten Commandments and the stuff. It's dull. It says here. If that makeshift arrangement impressed us, how much more the brightly shining government installed for eternity. Come on, that's beautiful. Come on. Huh? That's in your face. Verse 12. With that kind of hope to ex excite us, nothing holds us back. Nothing can hold you back. It should excite you. Come on, I'm more than a conqueror. Nothing can hold you back. Nothing can overtake you. No sickness, no death, no finances, no nothing. 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 Of course, He's given to you and you have to work for it. You just had to receive it. You couldn't even believe for it, man. Come on, seriously. It's not even your faith. That's how awesome God made it for us. You know? Because people say, yeah, this and this. If you understand what He's done for you, this thing, it humbles you. It humbles me because God freaks me out. Then I go, oh God, you're awesome. Oh, no, really? It's just not the iconic thing, Jesus on the cross. No, no. It humbles me to understand what He's done for me. That I don't want to sin. I don't want to do the things I want to do. I want to do what He wants to do. Do you understand? That 
the humbling experience of the cross. That's what it humbles me to understand more and more that I'm like Him. It humbles me. And nothing is truly impossible for me. That I can call those things, if not as though they were, and boom, there's money in my bank account. My business is flourishing. My body is well. I don't have to die. Because if you're made in His image and His likeness, can you die? No. So why do you want to die? And there was silence in the church. <laughs> See, belief systems cost us. He says here, yeah, unlike Moses, we have nothing to hide. Nothing. Because the, the law covers up. What happened when Adam and Eve sinned? They were covering up. Huh? That's what the law does. It covers up. We have nothing to hide anymore. We are free. We don't have to be ashamed of anything anymore. We are free. Understand? Amen. It says here, everything is out in the open with us. He wore a, a veil so the children of Israel wouldn't notice that the glory was fading away. And they didn't notice. They didn't notice it then and they don't notice it now. Don't notice that there is nothing left behind the veil. It is finished. It is done. Why do people still go back to the law? Why do I want to still do the stuff of this, all this religious junk? Why? Even today when the proclamation of the old bankrupt government are read, the law, they can't see through it. Only Christ can get rid of the veil so they can see for themselves that there's nothing there. Whether, through, whether they, though they turn to, to face God or Moses did, God removes the veil and, they are, and there they are face to face, like with God, face to face. The Son recognized that God is living, a personal present, not a piece of chiseled stone. You see, God is living, He is breathing, <clears throat> but we still look for the Scriptures and we still ask Christianity and we're looking for the scriptures, and we're not finding God. Start looking, hey, he's, he's God, hello. But people get offended when we say that. The Bible says he's not far off, he's not deaf that he doesn't hear. Am I right? You see, we, we remove God so far, and we still make him young. I mean, you go doctrine upon doctrine upon doctrine upon doctrine. God says, you are free, you are free. No more works, no more nothing. Rest from your labor. He said, I freely give you the kingdom. If he freely gives you something, what did you work for? Inheritance. He says, he's given us inheritance. What did you work for, inheritance? You didn't work for anything. Inheritance, somebody just bless you with. You didn't work for it. You didn't believe for it. You just received it. Why should anything be different? Come on. I mean. I'm preaching good, am I? <laughs> I'm enjoying this. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> you guys here. It's easier. Uh, and when God is personally present, a living spirit, that old constrict le um, legislation is recognized as obsolete. We're free of it. All of us. Nothing between us and God. Our faces shining with the brightness of His face. You see, He's busy saying, listen, you and me is one, so you shine like me, like the sun. You are one. So we're shining together. When people see you, you're shining. And the glory cannot fade. It cannot disappear. This is who you are. If you believe it or not, this is who you are. This is who you are. It says here, and so, uh, nothing, 
Nothing between us and God. Our face is shining with the brightness of His face. And so we are transfigured much like the Messiah. Our lives gradually becoming brighter and more beautiful as God enters our lives and we become like Say, so, I am like God. I like this stuff. Because <laughs> you start recognizing, come on. If I'm like God, because more and more we start understanding and manifesting that reality. It's not a process, it's a manifested reality. Because your mind's getting renewed and you start understanding, I'm like Him. You start understanding this stuff, then you're like, oh, I have this problem, this problem, but it can't overtake me because I'm like God. What problems can overtake God? Nothing. What future has God? Brilliant. Awesome. What favor has God? Do you recognize what I'm saying to you? It's very difficult for you to understand, but it's the truth. It's what the Scripture says. I like the Scriptures. Do you want some more? You guys can go. I'll start preaching for myself. Thank you very much. I can do that very well. I'm happy. <laughs> I'm so excited. Where do we go? Colossians 2. Let's go to the message. Colossians 2. Oops, no. Woo, praise the name of Jesus. Isn't God good? He's so freaking awesome. Yeah, man. Colossians 2. The message Bible, Colossians 2. We're going to go through. We're going to just read. Is that okay? We're just reading. I want you to realize that I continue to work as hard as I know how to, how for you. He's just working. He's doing, like I'm doing, I'm, I'm laboring, preaching. That's what he's talking, not this the law thing. It's just normal. Like you have a job and I just do the stuff. It's for me. It's a work. And also for the Christians over Laodicea. Not many of you have met me face to face, but that doesn't make any difference. Now that I'm on your side, right along you. You're not in this alone. I want you to... I want you woven into a tapestry of love, in touch with everything there is to know of God. He wants you to know everything about God. No, 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 only certain things. No, everything. See, we have this whole thing that only specific things, and only for specific people, only specific gifts for specific. No, the Bible says desire spiritual gifts. Whatever you desire, I have all of them. Have you seen me operate in all of them? I have, haven't I? Why? Because I desire it. You can have it too. You understand? God does not limit us. We limit us. Ourselves. We limit ourselves. It says here, Then you will have minds confident and at rest, focus on Christ, God's great mercy. All the richest treasures of wisdom and knowledge are embedded in that, in that um, uh, mystery and nowhere else. And we've been shown the mystery. You have been shown the mystery. I'm telling you this because I don't want anyone leading you off on some wild goose chase after other so-called mysteries or the secret. That's very interesting these days about the secret, man. Huh? Interesting. You see people like, Ooh, oh. no, 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 it's a secret. No, everything is open. Everything with God is open. Nothing is hidden. The book of Revelation. What does Revelation mean? To reveal. Apocalypse means also to unveil. But the book of Revelation is such a big secret. No, it's easy. It's finished. It's done. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. 
It's a revealing, not a closing, not a secret. You see how stuff messes up Christians and these people with a high degree stuff confuses the people more? The gospel is simple and beautiful, yet so powerful. Amen. I'm a long way off, true, and you may never lay eyes on me. But believe me, I'm not. On, uh, I'm on your your side, right beside you. I'm delighted to hear of the careful and orderly ways you conduct your affairs. I'm impressed with the solid substance of your faith in Christ. So he's admonishing them. You're being sweet, man. Come on, you're awesome. He says here, my counsel for you is simple and straightforward. Just go ahead with what you've been given. You receive Christ Jesus, the Master. Now, love Him. Love Him. The Lord said that to me years ago. Love me. Love me. You know, you, you must be like Jesus. No, I just love Jesus. You see what we, 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 we try to be? God says, don't try. You are. You are. And that's a problem with law and stuff. You are. Watch out. For, no, sorry. Wait a minute. Verse 7. You're deeply rooted in Him. See, you are deeply rooted in Him. You're well constructed upon Him. You know your way around the faith. Now do what you've been taught. School out. Quit studying the subject and start living it. And let your living spill over into thanksgiving. You see, we still want to do it. And then one day we'll lay hands on this. No, live it. Live it. Live this life. Enjoy this life. Don't try to work hard. Just live it. You know what? You're going to make mistakes and that's okay. But just live Christ out. Just live this life. It's good to study and stuff like that. But don't let your study now stop you. That you never feel good enough that you cannot get there. Do you understand? I, I'm studying every day, every week. I mean, yesterday... God overwhelmed me. I thought, God, I'm not actually, I feel like almost like I can't teach. I can't teach. I've got so far to go. There's so much stuff that I see like this, Lord. But it doesn't matter. We all, you know what? God sees us already there. Yes, you're going to keep on studying the Word. You're going to keep on studying. But start living it, man. Trying this awesome gospel. Trying this awesome thing. It's good. It says here, I'd watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread the ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty superstitions of spirit beings. But, they, but that's not the way of Christ. Does it sound familiar? It's nice. Huh? The message is not bad. Huh? I'm not really a big fan of it, but it's pretty cool now. Huh? Praise the Lord. God can use the message. <laughs> everything, God, everything of God gets expressed in Him so you can see and hear Him clearly. I don't know how to hear. You can! John 10 says, My sheep hear my voice. Say, Meh! <laughs> You're a sheep, you can hear His voice. <laughs> <laughs> it says here it says you don't need a telescope a microscope or a horoscope to realize the fullness of Christ and the emptiness of the universe without him it's pretty cool man we like the message we like the message <laughs> he says when you come to him that fullness comes together for you to his power extends over everything. See how God sees you, but do you see it yourself? Do you see that God has made you more than just what you are here? Do you see that? I want you to see that. There's nothing hidden. God didn't do a half-ass job. Amen. But we are so scared to let go because if I let go, then I'm going to lose. 
no, 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 this tongue thing is not for me. This baptism thing is not for me. No, 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 I can't do that. No, I can't believe like that. Surrender. God put the things in place for what? To help you or to damage you. He puts principle about sowing and reaping, blessing and stuff like that, laying out. Why? For your benefit. Why would he do anything to hurt you? Did he withhold anything? No. He said that in Romans 8. You know, I have to say this. Romans 8. If he didn't even spare his only son, how would he more give us freely anything if we ask him? Go and read Romans 8. You see, God wants to give us more than we have now. But he can't because we stop him because of our belief system. Although he says, I've given you everything, but your belief system is stopping you from receiving that fullness. But you have the fullness. But your belief system is stopping him. I don't want to be stopped by my stupid ideas. I said, Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy. My name is Jimmy. <laughs> you know? It's what I want. But said, so enter into this fullness is nothing something you figure out or achieve. It's not a matter of being circumcised or keeping a long list of laws. No, you're not. No, you're already in inside us, not through some uh, um, secretive initiation, right? But rather through what Christ has already gone through for you, destroying the power of sin. You see, we still want to. So you're already in it. Just receive it. You destroy the power of sin. So why do you want to keep on sinning? You see, grace doesn't give you the power to sin. Grace empowers you to stop sinning. Hello? You see, because you, the more you recognize the stuff, you're like, I can't do that anymore. <laughs> That's not me. That's not who I am. Do you understand what this should do to you when you receive this stuff? It should empower you so much. My God, thank you. <whistles> then he goes on. He says here, but there's one thing. He says, verse 12. If it is an initiation ritual you are, you are after, you've already been through it by the submitting to baptism. Going under the water with the barrier of your old life, coming up out of it with a was a um, resurrection. God raised you from the dead as He did Christ. So baptism, there, we have a pool, we're going to do it now soon. It says that if there's a ritual that you need to do, do the baptism. Because what happens is actually you died with Christ, then you raised with Christ. So you don't have to start on the, on the, on the, on the, on the crucifixion. You see? You don't, he said, let's make it easy. Go through the water and up again. Then your old life is buried, it's gone, it's dead. It's your new creature. So you now glorified. When Jesus died and rose from the dead, what happened? He became glorified. He said to Martha, he said, don't touch me. I have not extended yet to the Father. Because you had to present that vessel to him. And then he came back. And he says, now... As I am, you are like me in this world. So if you are like him, truly, you, you went through the water there, and up again, you died, you lived again, how can you die again? How can you be sick? How can you be poor? Hello? But see, we struggle to understand that, because we think, oh, it's just nice sayings. It's not nice saying. it's true sayings. That is real. I'm preaching like it today. I must admit. <laughs> because it's so real. It's overwhelming if you get it into your heart. But said, when you were stuck in your old sin, dead life, you were incapable of responding to God. God brought you alive right along with Christ, thinking of it, all sin forgiven. The slave whitling that all the rest had Warren cancelled and nailed to the Christ cross. He stripped all the spiritual tyrants in the universe of their harm, shame, authority at the cross and marched them naked through the streets. See, scripture. 
Hier is ouwe, die deel was kaal gehad, hier was strip te volpen in sy paradies, maat en dominie. Prijs die Heere, gaan te keer die duivels keer verkleer nou. Sie, skripsel. Hier Hier was strip. Like it. Verse 16. So don't put put up with anyone pressurizing you in the um, delights of diet, worship service, of holy days. You know, this is a holy day. This we have to serve this, and this is that days. And what? All those things are mere shadow cast before what was to come. The substance is Christ. Who wants to do Christmas? Not me. But why do you have church on a Sunday? It's just simple. It's easy. We're all not working, so it makes it simple. Do you hear what I'm saying? Special days, Yimmel Fart, Exchanging, whatever days, holidays, this special days, whatever day. No! Don't let anyone judge you. Other churches do it. Bless them. It's fine. It's awesome. I just don't because I know the truth. Every day is a holy day to me. Every day is a day of rest for me. Isn't it right? See, God doesn't work on the sun and, and you stop on the seven and they say, oh, I'm so tired. Whew, that was hard work. God could have created everything in a single sentence, but he put days in one in, in place. Why? To create time. To create time, he put day one, day two, whatever, he creates time. But the first Two days, he mess, messed up because there was not really a sun or anything. But he put time in motion. Then it's like, oh, I'm so tired, I'm going to rest. Actually, on the seventh day, he created man. Not on the sixth day, read the Bible. On the day of rest, he created man. In your families. Huh? Read him. That's why Jesus he healed people on the Sabbath. He did work on the Sabbath. Why? God created man on the Sabbath, so he healed the people on the Sabbath. And it messed up the whole doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. I like that, eh? I do that to a lot of people. Mess up their belief system. <laughs> to make them better. That's the whole idea. He says here, they complete... Okay. Verse 18. Don't tolerate people who try to turn your life, ordering you to bow and, and, and scrape, in, um, insisting that you join their obsession with angels, and that they seek out visions. They are, a lot, they are a lot of hot air. That's all they are. They are completely out of touch with the source of life, Christ, who puts us together in one piece, whose very breath and blood flows through us. His very breath and blood. What does it mean? It's Him. No longer I that live it, but Christ lives inside of me. Isn't it right? His very breath and blood. So we're going to do that. Run through us. It's amazing. So then, oh sorry, um, he is the head and we are the body. We can we can grow up healthy in God only as he nourishes us. So then, if with Christ you've put all that pretentious and inf- uh, infantile religion behind you, why do you let yourself be bullied by it? Don't touch this, don't taste that, don't go near this. Do you think things that are here today and gone tomorrow are worth the kind of attention? I mean, I heard the story, I think about, I said it before, you get this monster drink, and they say, yep, it's actually devil stuff and whatever stuff, and you know, it comes from Satanists or things, whatever. What did you want to go and do? I went and bought one. <laughs> no, because it's actually three, three in this room, not in this thing. I said, Praise God. Ha! Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> and it gave me a bit of a buzz. <laughs> and I was happy. <laughs> you see what we do? I'm saying, that, don't go and look for willful evil. We don't tempt evil. Do you know what I'm saying? Don't be stupid. Go through. I mean, come on. March through a place and shout stupid stuff and you might just get killed. Do you understand what I'm saying? You stand in the middle of a street and say, this car can't hit me. Hmm, that's just talk. You're tempting God. You don't do that. Such things, oh, such things sounds impressive if 
said in a deep enough voice, Oh, my brothers and sisters, welcome today. Now, this, it's true, isn't it right? Have you seen how people's lives you? Oh, my brother and my sisters, welcome. It's like weird. It's like this religious demon thing manifesting. They even give the illusion of being pious and humble and as aesthetic. But they are just another way of showing off, making yourself look important. How do you get that stuff? Let's go to Colossians 3. Next. I'm just reading. Is that okay? Is guys still awake? I am. <laughs> so if you're serious about living this new resurrection life with Christ, act like it. Act like it. You might not be there, but act like it. Fake it till you make it. Huh? It's like this. Call those things if not as though they were. I'm dead free. I'm dead free. You look at your bank and Rui, Rui. I'm dead free. Act like it. I'm godly. You know? I have a habit of an addiction. This doesn't have me. I'm not justifying it. I am free. You know what? You keep on doing that. What's going to happen? Because you're not justifying your sin. You're not saying it's okay. You say, my God, I'm free from this. I act like Jesus. Jesus doesn't do this thing. What's going to start happening? Things going to fall off. Do you hear what I'm saying? Can I hear an amen? Don't shuffle long eyes to the ground. Oh, sorry. Pursue those things over which Christ presides. Don't shuffle long eyes to the ground and absorb with these things right in front of you. Look up. Me, me. No, 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 me. You see, no, look up. Look up. And be alert to what is going on around Christ. That's where the action is. See things from His perspective. It is done. I am holy. I am blameless. I am the righteousness of God. I can do all things to Christ to strengthen me. Come on. I am holy. I am blameless. I am just like God. That's from His perspective. Hello? Not yours. How you feel? It says here, your old life is dead. Your new, your, your new life, which is your real life, even through invisible to spectators, is with Christ in God. He is your life. It's beautiful. Moi. Isn't it right? You guys see it all up there. Great God. Come on. Your, your old life is dead. It's not doing you anymore. He is your life. When Christ, your real life, remembers, shows up again on this earth, you'll show up to the real you, the glorious you. Meanwhile, be content with obscurity like Christ. You might not feel like it, okay? Some people will not obtain it now, but you'll obtain it later. It doesn't matter. But you'll obtain it. Pursuing your belief system. I want all of it now. And that means skinning off everything connected with that Way of death, sexual promiscuity, impurity, lust, doing whatever you feel like, whenever you feel like it, and grabbing whatever attracts your fancy. That's a life shaped by things of feelings instead of by God. It's just a sign you come on, that's not who you are. That's what he's saying. Don't hold on to those things that could kill you. Because the Bible says sin kills. You might be saved, you have Jesus and whatever, but you just want stuff, you're going to die. It says here, it's because of this kind of things that God is about to explore, explode in anger. Let me explain to you. When, when you love somebody and they start doing things that is ungodly and you know it's hurting them, what do you do? I feel I want to hurt them. Can't they see what they're doing? You keep things, you want to hurt them. I just want to tell them. Wanna... You feel anger, isn't it right? 
Because that anger is actually hurt. Am I right? This is how God is. He's not going to surprise anger and hurt you. No, his anger is him that, come on, it's not who you are. I want to hurt you, but I'm not going to. I'm going to hurt you, but I'm not going to. You feel that with people, don't you? That's what God is doing. He says here, Seven. It wasn't long ago that you were doing all that stuff and not knowing any better. He says, that's not, you didn't, all that, that's, you didn't know better. Man, I was a super professional sinner. I did everything to the extreme and then I did it all over again. But I didn't know any better. I didn't understand Christ. I didn't understand who I am. I didn't understand any of this stuff. You know? It's but now I know better, but you know better now. So make sure it's all gone for good, bad thing, but it the Itability, meaningless, profanity, dirty talk. Don't lie to one another. You're doing with that old life. It's like a filthy set of ill-fitting clothes you strip off and put in the fire. So you see, this, this is not who you are. So you need to, I need to remind you who you are. Now you've dressed in a new wardrobe. Every item of your new way of life is custom made by the Creator with His label on it. Better than Gucci, Prada, much better. It says here, all the old fashions are now obsolete. Words like Jewish and non-Jewish religion and ir- irreligious insiders and outsiders, um, uncivilized and uncount slaves and free mean nothing. From now on, everyone is defined by Christ. Everyone is included in Christ. There's nothing more. We're all the same if you have Christ. No Jew, no Gentile, all Greek, all ones, whatever. Huh? Black, white, skinny, frizz. There's no fat people here. You know? Do you hear what I'm saying? Male, female. You know, if you have your business or don't have a business, doesn't matter. We're all free. So chosen by God for the new life of love, dressed in the water of God, picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even tempered, content with second place. Uh, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. Be quick to forgive. I know people irritate us. I forgive them. People say, say bad things about me. I'm like, bless you and forgive you. You understand what I'm saying? Do that. It's for your own heart, for your own sake. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing and cultivate thanksgiving. Don't do your own thing. We are here as a people standing together. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of this house. Give it plenty of room in your life. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing, sing your heart out to God. Let every detail in your life, words, action, whatever be done in the name of the Master Jesus Christ. Thanks, thank, thank God the Father every step of the way. This whole thing, God is just telling who you are. He's saying who you are. He's telling you who you are. Why do you have to try to be something less? This is not the old. You have put off the old. You have put on Him. You've got a new robe. You've got new things. This is who you are. You're not a mistake. He knew you. He loves you. He cares for you. He wants the best for you. I like this. New King James, John 1, verse 16 to 18. Love this. John 1, verse 16 to 18. It says here, And of His fullness, we have all received grace for grace. Did He say specific people? Just the Christians? Just the Jews? Or did He say all? All has received. But not not people want to receive it. They reject it. But all have received it. And grace for grace. Grace came, Christ And when he came, grace, and he says, now I give you grace. That's what it means. Grace came, Jesus, and said, now this grace, I give to you. That's pretty cool, man. He says here, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. 
No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son, who is the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. So Jesus declared the Father. If you see me, you've seen the Father. Now, if, now, what happens now? When people see you, who do they see? Jesus. They see the Father. They see Holy Spirit. Do you understand what I'm trying to say to you? This is overwhelming stuff. This is cool stuff. This is in your face. This is exciting stuff. You see, we've been dealt all the full. He says, everybody got it. But how, how large is your capacity to receive it? Because you can say no. I don't. No, I'm not. Don't I try to figure out, on, try to figure out God sometimes. Just receive it. Just receive it. Lord, I don't know how I'm going to get. I just want it. I don't know how to pray. I just want to pray. No, I don't know this baptism. I just want this baptism. Lord, I don't know how. You know, I'm a bank account. I just want it. You say this. And, Lord, I have power in me. Lord, I don't know how to. But I just receive it. Lord, I just receive this fullness. The understanding will come later. Many times I've done something later. The stuff like, ooh. Oh, now I understand why I did it. How many times I prophesied or, or spoke life or would have not, would have wisdom. I said, I don't know why I said that. I said more, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> but apparently it was right. <laughs> then people come after with me. You know what you said, so and so and so? I said, yes, it was right. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> they said, well, you know why I said it? Because you did so and so and so. Oh, I understand why I said it. coming for the language. <laughs> and everyone says, oh. <laughs> I made a couple of notes. I want you to understand this. We, we need to move beyond something. It says, it's time for us to stop believing and just be who, who we are in His image and His likeness. We start off with believing. Now we just know. See, we start off with believing. Now you don't need to believe anymore. Now you should know. What do you need to believe anything more about God? You just know. So if I ask you, is God good? Do you have to believe it? You just know. Is God faithful? He says, do you have to believe it? Did, God die, did, did Jesus die on the cross for us? Do you have to believe it or do you know it now? You see, we have to move beyond belief and just know. Because as He is, so are we in this world. Do you think God goes, I believe, I believe, I know, no, 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 no. I just know. I just know. He knows that you can do it. But do you know that you can do it? God sees potential in you that you can do anything. Because He's done it for you. See, it's time for us to move beyond this belief and just knowing it is possible. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for it. Stop believing only parts of God and start taking the whole package, His fullness. We did compartmentalization. This bit, this bit, not that bit, this little bit. No, 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 that's too much. Oh, that's too much. Oh, don't want that. Tuck in the whole package of God. But God wants me to be well. God wants to be well. God wants me to speak life. God wants me to love everybody. God wants to my heart to be clean. You know what? All this stuff. Take everything of God. Let's stop being knee conscious. I need this. I need this. And start living. Let me explain. In our living with God, being one with Him, our needs and wants will be fulfilled. Do you hear what I'm saying? I need this. And no, no, no. I just want to live and know that I'm God. In that, my needs and my wants, everything will be fulfilled. Because why would He not give it to me? You see, we, just want to, we are just living. We have this whole gospel about, give me, give me, and then go through and whatever. 
got this need belief system to get in. Just live in this live, living with God, God in you, being one with God. You will get what you need, and you need what you get, and you get what you want, and you want what you get. <laughs> Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? What God is saying? Remember, as He is, so are we in this world. So, as we are like Him in this world, then truly nothing can overtake us. Then in this world, at all. You see, if we truly are like Him in this world, nothing can truly overtake us. That's what the Scripture says. Can anything overtake God? Nothing. So, what can overtake us? Can peril, can pestilence, can read Romans 8 again, the last bit. Death, principalities, might. What can overtake us? Nothing. You are His image and His likeness, His nature. You are like Him. Don't let your old nature, which is dead, lie to you and do the former things. Don't let it, don't let things lie to you. know people say this, this is like this. Alcoholic meetings. Get up. Hello. My name is Johan and I'm an alcoholic. Hello. But they haven't had a drink for how long? Year, two years. So they're still saying that they are alcoholics. What is going to happen 10 years, 20 years from now? They're going to what? Because they can say it. Hello, my name is Johan, and I'm not an alcoholic anymore. Thank you, Jesus. Because I call those things, even as I were. I'm not speaking my old man. I'm speaking my new man. I am free. I have no habits. I have no addictions. I am free. I'm living righteous. I'm living holy. I'm living blameless. I, God has justified me. I don't justify my sin. Do you see what I see? Do you see what God sees in you? This is awesome. Amen. I want you to see this and get this. Get the teaching. I'll teach it more and more so to get within you. So you can go out there and get so excited. And go out there in any trouble, if it, you can get, get over it. Because as he is, so I, am I in this world. Nothing is hidden. Everything is revealed. I have His fullness. I might not understand this fullness in, in whatever I'm still getting, but I have this fullness. I don't know why I'm speaking. Nothing is happening. I don't really care, but I know it's going to happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? I pray for someone that didn't get healed, but I know God heals. You know? I pray for my bank account to be full, and it's a bit slow. <laughs> but it's getting there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't get despondent by what you see. Get excited about what you know. Capish. Woohoo! Good preaching, Johan. 